I could be wrong on this, but I am going to guess you are just like me when it comes to everybody asking you questions. Whether you're a doctor, a dentist, an engineer, a mechanic, a furniture salesperson, or whatever it is you do for a living, I'm going to take a wild guess that people want to know details all the time and always ask you about this or that or want your opinion and all sorts of things. I'm just like you. I get those questions all the time, every single day, at family events, out in business, on the street, for people that even recognize me. Um, but I get asked all the time, what's it like living in Ohio from where you came from? Because I moved from Michigan, so people are always asking what it's like living in Ohio that's different than Michigan because I didn't grow up here from the start, experience moving into the area. And people specifically ask, what's the cost there? Is it expensive to live in Northeast Ohio? You know, What's the housing like? Your house is expensive? Are schooling for kids expensive? Um, what's gas prices over there? They want to know everything, You know how much your job's paying and all sorts of stuff. Non-stop, get asked all the time. Let's tell you what, I love what I do, so I'm good answering all those questions. But to sum it all up, because I get asked that so much and I get messaged a lot, even like from YouTube videos and stuff, asking about more details and stuff, I'm gonna create this video right here and I'm gonna tell you what it's like living in Northeast Ohio and if it's expensive, cheap, what it's like cost-wise so you understand, could you afford to live here and is it for you? And I'm gonna cover that right now. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Justin Robleski with High Point Real Estate Group. If this is your first time to my channel because you're really not even sure who I am or who I am, never met me, don't know anything about me, click on that subscribe button and click the little bell to be notified every time I post a new video. I'm gonna be posting videos weekly here to update you on what it's like to eat, sleep, play, live, dream, work, do everything in North Coast Ohio on this channel. I'm gonna give you lots of information that you're looking for, and I'm gonna do it just like I'm talking to you back and forth, one-on-one. -on -one. So, click on that subscribe button, click the little bell. If there's anything I can help you with, I have people contacting me on a regular basis, looking to buy, sell, invest, and do all sorts of stuff with real estate in Ohio. I love what I do. I'm constantly contacted several times throughout the week by people from my YouTube channel, on Facebook, on Instagram. Reach out to me at any time. Like I said before in other videos, you want to contact me through Facebook, call me, text message me, email, Instagram, LinkedIn, freaking send a carrier pigeon for all I care. I'm available anytime you need me to and I'll answer your question any way you would like me to. But in this video, just like I discussed, I'm going to tell you what it's like to live in Northeast Ohio. Is it expensive here? Is it cheap here? Is it realistic? Kind of give you an idea, but I'm going to make or let you make that decision. So I'm going to just tell you what to expect out of it. So. One of the biggest questions, out of all things, shockingly, is what is it like for gas prices in Ohio right now? And I find it's hilarious because no other time in the past 10, 15 years that I've lived here have people really been too concerned with the gas prices. So I'm going to give you the gist of it here. We're going to see different gas stations. You're going to see them. Any, it depends on where you're at. So right now, I would say the range is you're anywhere from 336 a gallon to where you can get up to like... 369 a gallon if you can catch a pretty cool deal um there's a gas station called a red rover gas station over by where i'm at or if you have bj's wholesale or sam's wholesale club you can get gas for like 325 to 330. typically most of the time you know when things weren't art like they are now you know we were getting gas for on average 229 maybe to 249 per gallon and that stayed stable for a few years so that gives you perspective what you're paying now. So if you have a big vehicle, really sorry about that. So I understand it is hurting your pocketbook pretty bad right now. So that's the gist of it. That's whether you're gonna be in Cleveland, Akron, Canton, pretty similar across the board. You might see a fluctuation of 20 to 30 cents depending on what demographic you're in. But for the most part, it's about the same across the board. So the next biggest thing I get asked, what is housing prices over in, that, in you know, Northeast Ohio? What's it like in Ohio? Here's the thing, man. It's just like any other area. Housing prices can fluctuate a lot. So you know, some big areas that you're gonna be looking at is Akron, Canton, Cleveland are all major hubs in Northeast Ohio. So here's the deal. If you're looking at a house, you want it right on Lake Erie up in Cleveland, and you wanna have, you know, freaking 5,000 square foot house right on the lake, hey, don't be shocked if you're gonna drop $2 million. Now let's be real. 
that's not a normal price point for the average person. So I completely get it. But say for example, you just want a nice family home. You want to be in a decent area. Feels like, hey, it's a nice neighborhood for kids or you know, you feel safe in that area. There's tons of places for that. But that's also gonna vary depending on where you live. So if I were gonna pick out, say, an average for say of a house, say for example, say 2,000 square feet, um, we'll say four bedrooms, okay? You have a couple kids, want an extra room for you know in-laws or someone to stay over, and you want maybe quarter acre to a third of an acre. So you want a decent sized yard with a deck and a patio. For that size, in you know, very desirable school districts, you're probably gonna be 350,000. If you know you're kind of in like the upper scale areas, maybe 400 to 450. But you can also get a house like that in the $200,000 range if you don't want to be in this highly rated of a school district, and we'll say maybe not as clean of an area or as desirable of an area. You could probably be looking at 200,000. If you want a complete rundown shack and where maybe you might want to bulldoze it, it you probably can snatch one up for 120. Um, but then literally it's just tear it down. You're just going to rebuild. Um, but typically those kind of houses aren't in, we'll say the better areas. Those are in kind of rundown areas and you're not going to build a nice new expensive house in a rundown area because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do so. So if you're looking for something, maybe it's 1500 square feet, you know, and you can do a little bit smaller with a smaller family. Maybe it's just a husband and wife, significant another, maybe you have one child. You know, it, you can be looking at something anywhere from, let's say 150 uh, to 250, we'll say. You know, it is a pretty good range there. Um, just depends on what area you want to be in and how nice it is, but much more affordable. And then you got your smaller houses that are maybe a thousand square feet or so, you know, a couple, three bedrooms maybe with a basement. You're probably not getting a finished basement in this situation, but maybe you're looking at the 100,000, maybe $120,000 range. So that is actually and still being in decent area. So you have such a huge smorgasbord. I mean, I would say for your lower end, you're probably looking in that $100,000 range to be in a decent area. Um, to where you're going up to like that $400,000 range. And that's for like an average person in general, but obviously income fluctuates. So hopefully that helps. And then you got your crazy ones that you start getting into the half million plus for more acreages and larger homes and super high end communities. And then you got your ones that I, I've sold houses. I mean, I've sold in upper hundreds of thousands. and But you also have your lower end ones to where I've sold houses that were a bank repossessed house. The bank just wanted to get rid of it. It was a 500 square foot little bungalow and we were able to pick it up for 20,000 um, bucks. Don't count on that anymore. Those are very rare with the economy the way it is and the market the way it is. We're not finding too many $20,000 houses. But that gives you a perspective of how that all works out. So another thing is that people ask for, what are the jobs like there? Yo, is there money to be made for? You know, can I really make some decent money, you know, in Northeast Ohio to afford a nice house? And the answer to that is, is the jobs are abundance here. They're, they're a major abundance. And whether you're in the healthcare field, we hire tons of healthcare people. We have decent technology sector here, lots of uh, construction work. You know, if you're in the skilled trades, plumbing, electrician, there's lots of jobs in the area to where you can make anywhere from 50 grand to well into the hundreds of thousands if you're highly specialized doctors obviously you can make into the millions but you kind of get the gist of it but it's a very wide range of places i mean there's taco bell and burger king hiring for freaking 15 dollars an hour now so if that gives you a perspective there's a lot of job availability so what kind of house you'd want to buy and where you're going to live and how much that gas is really going to factor in obviously is going to make a big difference in your income but yes, depending on what your specialty is and what kind of income you're looking for, there is an abundance of places you can go to out here. So I wouldn't be overly concerned about finding a job here because I think there is plenty enough of them. All right, another thing which I've discussed this before is you know things, it's actually in the video I talk about things I wish you knew about moving to Ohio. Well, living in Ohio is, here's the thing is, if you have children, a lot of people need daycare. The average person doesn't have a stay at home parent any longer. So you're gonna put your kids in daycare if they're not already in preschool, kindergarten, whatever. A daycare can be pretty expensive. So, you know, we have three kids. None of ours have to be in daycare any longer, which is good, they're in school and stuff. Um, but when we were paying for daycare for one child on average, I'm trying to remember, I think it was around 
50 something bucks a day, so probably 250 to 300 bucks a week. Um, but they gave you a deal like uh, if you committed a full time five days a week, we got it to where it ended up equaling out <clears throat> something like three and a half days of pay or four days of pay or something like that. So if you commit to a full week um, and you commit long term, you get a much better deal. Um, there's a ton of daycares in the area. Now I'm going to tell you, head up, you know, uh, cost wise, they fill up fast. So you want, if you're, you're moving to the area, that's one of the things you want to check into early. And I can give you some tips of where I would recommend and based on recommendations to me. Um, but for kids, be prepared to spend, you know, 200 to $300 per week per kid. Some of them will give you a discount, but if you have multiple kids, but you, you get the gist of it, it's not a cheap expense. So next thing is people ask about eating out and shopping. Now from my experience, we'll go to shopping. Like if I, you know, you're buying groceries and things like that. It doesn't seem like it's much different here than it is any other state. I have like family in Michigan. We recently got back from Florida. Um, it doesn't seem like the prices are any much different than anywhere else. So kind of expect right now, a milk is about $3 a gallon. Sometimes it goes on the 250 up to 350. It fluctuates. We bought two dozen eggs for 449 or 459, 69, something like that the other day. Um, so I mean, it, you kind of get the gist of it. What shocks me right now, bacon. No clue why bacon's so expensive. Um, I have caught bacon for about 350 a pound sometimes on sale, um, but bacon went for like six or seven bucks a pound for a little bit. Not even sure what that freaking is all about. I'm sure it has to do with the supply chain and all that, but you know what, whatever. My wife and kids like bacon, so we buy bacon, is what it is. Um, but those will give you some basics that a lot of people seem to have in their, you know, in their fridge, pantry, whatever. Uh, if you're big cereal people, or like a loaf of bread, you're anywhere from a dollar to five dollars from a specialized keto-friendly bread. Um, but a normal loaf of bread is usually about $1.50 to $2.50. Uh, if you do cereal, you're looking at, for a normal size box, about $3 a box. Maybe $3 for a box of oatmeal. Uh, package of cheese slices is roughly about 3 to $4 right now. So, I mean, I'm just naming off some things that kind of give you an idea of what the costs are for those things right now. Ground beef, you'll get anywhere from on sale for $4.45 or $4.49 a pound. Um, up to, I've seen that as high as like 8 or $9 a pound, which is brutal. Um, but you get the idea. Um, chicken, you'll, you can snatch up for 3 bucks a pound still, I think, in most situations on sale. Uh, but that gives you some ideas of what everything costs in that avenue. Um, if you're talking on eating out, I mean, like an Applebee's is an Applebee's. I mean, an appetizer is $10, $12 now. Um, you're going to pay a premium. I mean, McDonald's, freaking uh, McDonald's value meal is like $8 now, which is completely crazy. I mean, they're just convenient. Their food's not even really that good. Um, but you get the idea. Um, I mean, I, from what I've experienced going to Michigan, Florida, you know, we stopped in Kentucky, Tennessee, different sorts of states. I really haven't noticed a huge difference. Maybe a fluctuation here and there, but they're all similar. Um, the one that actually did seem a little bit expensive is Florida. Actually, um, Florida actually charged a little bit more for meat than what we had. Uh, I'm sorry, no, Florida charged less for meat than what they charge here in Ohio. So we did get better deals on like burgers and stuff like that in Florida. So that was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same across the board. I'm sure New York, California, areas like that are crazy different. But for the most part, I know it's about the same. I just gave you a list of stuff that are examples for you. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of what everything is like. Um, I've heard like car insurance, for example, Michigan is like a no fault state to where you, uh, insurance rates are outrageous. To give you an idea right now, I have four vehicles fully insured. Three of them are newer, one's older. Um, no, I'm sorry, two of them are a little bit older. Two of them are newer, full coverage with kids on them. And we're paying, because we pay every six months here, um, I think we're paying about $1,500, a little bit less than $1,500, and that's for six months. And that's four cars fully insured with younger people on them. Um, so our insurance actually isn't that bad. Homeowner's insurance is not horrible. Uh, for a $300,000 house, you can usually get homeowner insurance for under 1000 bucks a year. So from that perspective, not bad at all. But I know this video is starting to get long, don't want to keep you guys here forever. Um, just like I mentioned before, if there's anything I can do for you, shoot me a text, call me, email me, Facebook message me, whatever. Send that pigeon carrier if you want. I'm constantly helping clients do everything I can possibly do for them. 
I'm available. I'm that agent that I'm waking up at 6 a.m. for calls if I need to. I got a closing tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. with a client. So I'm gonna be out the door early with them to meet them. Um, but you know, I, I answer calls and texts at 11 o'clock at night. I answer them at six in the morning. You hit me up at 2 a.m. Cool, I'm, I'm good with it, but I'm probably not responding. I'm most likely gonna be in bed. Uh, but yeah, I like to be available for my clients at any time, take care of you the best way I can. I am no pressure, no pressure policy, man. I wanna do what's best for you, take care of you, do the right thing, but click on that subscribe button, just like I mentioned before, click that little bell to be notified anytime I send another video out so you know what's going on at all times. All right, with that said, I'm out of here.